Hey traders, T Bradley 90 here. For those who do not know, Alex took on the challenge recently of seeing how much he can grow a $30,000 account in 30 trading days and the results are in and he made $84,000 in less than 30 trading days, which turned his $30,000 account into $113,000. Alex recently put together a free mentorship course with his mentor, Bao, explaining exactly how he did this. The link is available at myinvestingclub.co slash Alex. There is limited seating every single week, so be sure to reserve your spot. As a very special gift to our YouTube viewers, I want to announce something very special. This is my personal phone number, my personal number that I am putting out to you guys. If you have any questions about joining MIC or on the fence about joining our wonderful club, you can contact me now directly and personally, and I will get back to you. Hey guys, Austin here. Uh, back for another trade recap, but this time it's gonna be on SVRA. So I had a couple trades on SVRA on day one and on day two. Um, and I had some good trades and <clears throat> some trades I wish had worked out better. But anyway, before I get into it, I wanna say I'm not licensed, I'm not registered, I'm not a financial advisor, and none of this should be taken as investment advice, even if it sounds like it. Okay. So yeah, so SVRA, this was a big mover over the last couple days. <clears throat> you know, kind of an exciting, shocking mover. And we got a couple of, of good long and good short plays in it. Um, uh, I have a <clears throat> I have a video, uh, like a live video trading video where I just miss a really good move, but I feel like there's really good commentary and I'll be dropping that shortly. That should be coming out right after this video. Um, but... I'll release that later. For now, I kind of want to do a little recap of the trade itself. So um, let's let normally let's start on day one, or no, we, could, we let's start on day two though. Let's start on day two. Um, this was my trades on SVRA on day two. I'm doing this the, the night after because it was Thanksgiving or sorry New Year's Eve, so I just saved the charts that I had. But this the um, oh sorry that's not it. This is my all day chart on SVRA, right? Um, so the thing was SVRA like had that huge move from day one. We had this huge move on day one and then we kind of gapped down, not really a gap down from the close, but a gap down from you know the after hours float up the previous day. And so basically the, the one key uh, level here <clears throat> was $4.40. That, that was like, <clears throat> That was the level that the stock went on SSR and he had tanked out and I, I almost thought it was a certainty that we were going to trigger SSR for today. So when we started to uh, when we started to like bounce up and fail around five here, I got short um, right at around in there. Um, you know, just a quick, easy risk on five pre-market because we're getting close to the open and I feel like we were going to have a drop into SSR trigger time. And that I'd have a nice short on it. And so that was the idea from this short. It was just a gap down. It was, <clears throat> I feel like longs were underwater and that right at the open, you know, if we don't spike, if we do spike, it's an easy cutout, right? Because I'm short from here. If we do spike, I mean, I'm going to, my risk is at $5 anyway. But if we do spike, it's an easy cut. But if we don't spike, ever all all the longs are going to get disappointed that there isn't a spike going on. And so we might go down and trigger SSR which is normally where I like to cover in these kind of situations because that's normally when stocks start to slow down because it loses a lot of the short selling pressure. So this was just a quick open trade and I like I said I've been in, like I said in prior videos I don't normally do a whole lot of pre-market trading but you know if there's enough volume and there's a good enough reason to I do get in and this 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 SSR trigger hunt was it's something that I often like to do. So I got that trade and I was quickly out I didn't overstay or anything like I, I I tried to let it go to four but it wanted to hold which is normal that's kind of what I expected so I covered it <clears throat> right out of the gate <clears throat> but then we got a really nice opportunity for a reclaim right and so I told you 440 was the level it's the level we bounced off here it's also a level from a dip um, from the prior day um, 450 you know you can couple those together um, we got a we got this nice big strong green candle and that's when I got long biased on the stock because we had just triggered SSR you know this stock had high volume even for day two I think we already had like a few million shares traded in the first ten or fifteen minutes um, 
And I was like, that's a lot of volume for a day two play. We just reclaimed the 440 level. That was the SSR trigger. This is a solid entry um, to buy, right? And so I start buying the dips, you know, risking a fail, basically risking a fail kind of. I get out if it like failed under 440 on volume. So I just start easing in and then I add over the 460 level because now I have a new risk, right? I can now risk 450 or this 445 low right here. You know, I always like to add when I find a good spot to move my risk to and this little mini consolidation down here. Let's zoom in. This little, you know, I, I get long in here on the dips. That's where I first started buying. I tried to buy on the dips, risking just a fail candle. If that would have failed, I would have would have bailed. But then we, you know, we spike up. I add at 460 because now I'm comfortable risking a 445. It's a very clean level that I can risk off of. And we get a push up. And unfortunately for me, I only get half off here. Like I wanted to get around half off on five. And then I, I was hoping that we'd push to 550 and have a stronger push. But we just we just stuffed really hard, uh, and I you know, it's it's funny I had a I had like a little bit more to sell at 504 and I just barely missed I mean whatever but I only got half off on this trade over here, so I was really kind of disappointed in that but I mean that's the way it goes sometimes right I mean this stock you know this stock has a larger than normal float so it's not completely un you know unexpected that it might not just go to infinity. Right, like it, it, it floats slightly larger than normal. It's five dollar whole number. That's why you take off half, right? That's why you take off half at these important levels, just in case they do decide to stuff. But anyway, it decides to stuff, and so I get out the rest. I just take the the rest off for break even. Actually, it looks like a little bit of a profit. I forget, but it's I mean it's break even to me. Hey traders, T Bradley 90 here, Tosh Bradley from My Investing Club Chat. Just wanted to reach out to you personally and show you how to contact myself personally if you have any questions about joining MIC, about MIC in general, or are on the fence and need a little bit of guidance before you join. For the first time ever, I have put out my personal number for you to reach me directly among my email at Tosh at myinvestingclub.com and our Twitter and IG handles. Reach out today and get any information you need on what makes MIC so great and why you should join us today.